Note that certain words within this piece may be muted for the purpose of avoiding suppression by the YouTube algorithms. Well, hello family, it is Miss Dana Ashley. Today I have for you an absolutely stunning interview. For those of you who saw my last video regarding the great damage that millimeter waves can cause the human body, you might be interested to know that I was uh, approached by a man who had various levels of secret while at the DH Navy, as well as one of the highest levels of clearance SCI during his time in the special where he worked alongside several three letter federal agencies. He approached me not only to validate what my last guest claimed about being damaged by millimeter waves, but he wanted to add details of how his special team had already discovered the truth and the danger of the millimeter waves. We were able to easily ascertain that the micromillimeter wave was well within a very damaging area of the frequency band. We put together a report on the, the medical complications, the known medical complications that are from our military pubs. And even more shocking, he witnessed direct and deliberate suppression of that information being released. So today, you'll hear what happens when folks on the inside speak out, because he wants to tell you what he can no longer, in good conscience, keep secret. And what makes this most shocking of all is the same millimeter wave technology that we will be discussing is the very same five spectrum frequency that is being rushed to be put on a light post near you. Don't miss this one. Hello family, it is Miss Dana Ashley and today I have a very special guest who has approached me with grave concern for our country. He heard about my video regarding the DHS employees that you all saw had terrible health consequences being around the 5 millimeter wave machines and he wanted today to add his confirmation of this as well. This man was a very intensely trained veteran of the IRS who has served our country, but he wants to share his intimate knowledge, not only of the abilities of these machines, but to let you know that the elites not only know about this, but they know about this and they're choosing not to do anything about it. Thank you so much for coming on today and sharing your story with us. Sure, thank you for having me. I just wanted to start off, and I'm just going to let you do most of the talking here today, but I wanted to let people know a little bit about your background and uh, let them know the kind of training that you had as a BAO or bomb appraisal officer within uh, special operations of the Navy. Um, I don't know a lot of this jargon, but you do, so I'll just let you <laughs> give a little background about the kind of uh, training you went through and how it led you to have intimate knowledge about the millimeter wave weaponry. Okay. Yeah, you actually, you did mess it up a little bit. In the military, it's called uh, EOD, to Explosive Ordnance Disposal. Okay. And in the Homeland Security, the title was a BAO, or Bomb Appraisal Officer. All right. So I started in the military in 2000, and I only got to do about six years, five and a half years with EOD, or Special Operations. Okay, so during those years of Special in the military, what was your particular specialty or job that helped you to learn about, in particular, the millimeter wave machines? In EOD, we, we were taught, uh, and it's, it's quite an extensive school, they put a lot of uh, money into every Navy EOD guy. I once heard it cost roughly a million dollars, or just over a million dollars, and there's not very many of us. So in, in that training, we were taught warfare, chemical, biological, nuclear warfare, uh, even electronic warfare. Uh, and from that training, knowing the electrical spectrum and, and, the, and the capabilities of, of stray frequency, 
we knew it intimately. Frequency can, can actually accumulate and cause sparks and, and cause stuff to detonate prematurely. So it's, it's, it's a very known our area of expertise. Getting into uh, the micromillimeter wave, because we didn't particularly have a micromillimeter wave, but we have lots in the military arsenal. It's all in the 5G, all this electronic air, crowd suppression and, and making your skin feel like it's burning. Or, yes. Uh, even mind, uh, giving a voice to skull. I mean, they can do all of this. Wow. And so when I aim it towards you, what you hear is made right next to your ears. So again, this idea of being able to put sound anywhere you want to is really starting to catch on. Uh, we've got the military had just deployed some of these into Iraq where you can put fake troop movements a quarter of a mile away on a hillside. <laughs> or you can whisper in the ear of a supposed terrorist some biblical verse. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> We make a version of this which puts out 155 decibels. Pain is 120. We sell those to the military presently for about $70,000. And they're buying them as fast as we can make them. You were familiar yeah, with that in your training? Feet. Or you just heard about well, that through other guys? Small amounts, yeah. There, we got to get some of the stuff that, that electronic repair was getting into, but really not a lot because that wasn't our expertise. We, we had to be aware of a lot and then later through conversation with electronic warfare specialists and just having you know you know a talk while our laundry was was uh getting done on the boat you know so wait say that again you got cut out getting done on the what we were on a ship and we were getting our laundry done and we were uh, just kind of sitting there chilling and we started talking military and and he found out what i did and i found out what he did and so we both had a clearance. There was nobody else in the room, and so we just kind of talked. And this cat actually told me about the voice of Skull being put onto a huge area of land in uh, Iraq for the first Gulf War to mentally defeat the, the enemy. And, and wow. he said this is why in droves they, they dropped their guns and, and came walking with their hands uh, high in the air. They used it, I believe, in the Gulf War to tell the enemy at that time, lay down your guns, this is Allah. And it worked pretty well, because hearing voices which have no direction or sound, you have to assume that it's some spiritual entity. Uh, so it works pretty well. They just were completely mentally defeated. And in the way that he, he said this, he did not like it either. And I think that, right. you know, knowing this type of stuff and being able to talk about it was almost relieving for him. And so it's kind of stuck with me because of the, the kind of the intimacy that was that we, we had built in that just that small conversation. Of course. Were you shocked to hear that? Had you heard about microwaves being able to be cast into the inner cochlea of the ear so that people heard voices in their head? Or he explained it to you that in that moment? He explained uh, that they were using it weaponized. Uh, I, th I think I was kind of semi-normalized to it. I mean, it's, it, the kind of stuff has been in James Bond and, and sure. other movies, you know, so. Uh, so he, he, it made him very nervous or it made him not feel so good about that form of manipulation to make people think they were hearing. Did he say, because I've, I've seen the guys that have... Uh, created this, I put this in my video on targeted individuals, the manufacturers bragged about this and said that they could use supposed biblical scripture to make them think they're hearing from Allah. Did he say that? Right. Or he just said... Yeah, the, the voice of Allah is what he said. Wow. Oh my yeah. goodness. Amazing. Okay. So you knew that was through the, the use of, of microwaves. At least that's what the manufacturer said. Or are you saying that was millimeter waves or you don't know? Uh, it's through the 5G spectrum. I don't know particularly where they're using it. And there's different like harmonic areas. Right. It's an art. There's, there's a lot to know that I don't. I just am aware of a lot of it because it pertained uh, immediately to my, my job. Of course. So your job ultimately, and I, I have to say, you know, 
this has been on your heart, at least that's how you uh, came to me about this, was that you you signed up to protect Americans, yes? Yeah, life and, and property, well, in that order. Right. Wow. You that's, signed up to protect we life and property, say. and so when you and your team, and you had a small team of guys who began putting together some dots, as you said, that wasn't necessarily what they told you to do, but you did work through and in the Department of Homeland Security as well at a particular international airport we will not name, but tell them what you did at that airport. Our job was to exploit weaknesses of the airport. So we were, you know, in a sense, uh, a terror. So our job was to find ways through security or just look for, for vulnerabilities. And then in finding them, being able to put together a, uh, a presentation and then teach the screeners on this. So we, we made uh, IEDs uh, not fully functioning. The mock explosive has a density similar to the real thing. So, so you're there to so, see if the people would catch it. Right, yeah. You're there to see how penetrable, in a sense, the airports were to test them in another sense. But you also were meant to know a lot about these machines that we now know are using millimeter waves that are classified as 5G frequencies. T talk about how you guys were like starting to question the safety of these machines and the report that you put together. Well, when we see something wireless like that, we can start talking with their data and, and seeing where exactly the frequencies are. And, and based off of our military pubs and, and access to and electronic warfare type understanding of frequencies, we were able to easily ascertain that the micromillimeter wave was well within a very damaging area of the frequency band. And we, we checked and double checked and, and we all came together. We put together a report on the, the medical complications, the known medical complications that are from our military pubs. And this is going off of the, the data sheets the company gave with machines. I actually tried to look up those data sheets myself. Yeah. I don't know if it was the L3 company. Yeah, they, have, they have many machines and, and they're all pumping different waves. So the frequencies that were used in the, the ones that people stand in, the ones that they tell you are as the same as a cell phone. If you, the did you, L3s? Yeah, the L3s. It scatters charged particles, basically. It's, it's frequency thrown at you, and then they retrieve the scatter. So it's kind of like a passive passive scanner, but it's, it's very accurate. I mean, it, it, How far back did you see proof of these waves having been tested through the military? How many years back were you seeing that this has already been tested and proven to be negatively impactful? Well, going through UD, we were taught about electronic warfare and, and the area frequency that they use and some of the known results. Uh, oh, as a weapon, you mean? Yeah, it's, it's electronic warfare. You're shooting out frequencies, it's like Tesla tech. Okay, so when your team confirmed that the millimeter wave machines at the airports were using harmful frequencies... Tell us what you did next. Well, we, we all, we had a lot of experience in EOD in our team, and we compiled a, a very, very complete report utilizing the, the data sheets the company provided with the micromillimeter wave scanners, which are proven to be very accurate. We took this report and we put it through our chain of command we weren't too far below the, the director of uh, Homeland, and so we, we heard back from him very shortly, and he had pulled all five of us uh, into his office and completely berated us, kind of in a very demoralizing way and, and, and kind of saying that we weren't, we weren't doing our job. We were, we were outside of our, our boundaries. 
Wow. They, they basically told us to shut down everything, to not involve any screeners or anybody else uh, into our report and our findings, to literally uh, drop everything and stand down. Wow. Um, I, was, I was floored. I was literally floored. I was, I'll probably never forget it. I feel it's, it's still crystal clear in my mind just sitting there and watching. And I had this kind of like, I did not even expect him to say that. I, I, th- I just thought it was going to be some other form of like, yeah, I'm going to take care of it. Right. It was just complete dismissal. And we had so much proof in that report that it's, it's not up for debate. <laughs> Our job in the military is to know what we're talking about. Right. It's literally life and death, right? It's, yeah, our, our motto is initial success or total failure. So, I mean, think about that. Your attention to detail and, you know, how much dedication you have to your craft. If we were applying this same dedication to the, the safety of our screeners. Right. I mean, we knew not to, to walk in front of it ourselves. And these Poor people are just being scanned. Day in and day out. Yeah, at different places in the airport. It was was so criminal. It is criminal. And again, thank you so much for sharing this. So, but when when you guys are, I mean, this is a very high up in the military. Uh, You said it was a director of the Homeland Security. Yeah, he wasn't necessarily military, but he was, yeah. He was military. Yeah. So he was a director of Homeland Security. And this is as high as it gets, right? So by the time you walked in, there was no letting you have the floor to share your concern for... He these. controlled the room. Right. Right. Yeah, it was... It was. I thought we had done something wrong. Well... <laughs> I was completely floored. You'd done something very right. And uh, you said something very interesting when you called me about this the first time, that he seemed not too comfortable with the fact that you guys knew what you knew. He was agitated, definitely. And and I don't want to say this is, is what happened because of it. It was in a recourse of it. But our whole team was taken down in different ways. Two were let go. One transferred. One was demoted. Uh, the other one, I think, just quit. So just completely disbanded. Right, and then he got in a bunch of um, what we heard were yes men. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Wow. So your concern was truly for these screeners at the airport that you knew that oh, were... Of course. You also uh, mentioned to me that after the fact you were still so concerned about the screeners that you pled with your superior to put together sort of a minimal operation exposure for these people. Yeah, we were just, it's part of the report. We put in a mitigation area where we, you know, we understand that that it's not completely in our hands. And if they had to roll through with it, this is a, a more safer way to use a micromillimeter wave scanner. And of course, they didn't uh, do that. Well, of course, they didn't. So they are within the this electronic bubble that, that is being emitted from that, that scanner, and constantly just sitting in it. And then even worse, the concentrated dose being bounced off of unsuspecting uh, passengers. Travelers. Travelers. It's... So what would you do if you went to an airport today? Would you take a pass on the scanner? How much does it take? I'd ask for pat-downs. Yeah. Right. Ask for pat-downs. Right. Like, get over it. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is what we're in, you know? Right. Uh, I, I strongly suggest not to go through those things. Right. This, mm-hmm. folks, is coming from someone who knows exactly what they do. So when it comes to that last video, I mean, my big concern is I know this is a really hard pill to swallow. My gosh. So now we've confirmed that the military hypes do know they're asking for yes men and people who are not going to question this. I wanted to let first people know about the biological impacts, but in fact, this isn't just to make people have cancer. This is for surveillance. This is a control grid. Tell me what you know about the electronic warfare wasn't your department, but you did get some training in it and had a background knowledge of it. Do you know anything about the capacity of 5G and millimeter waves to 
surveil and or impact people's emotions, for example? Yeah, all of our frequent, all of our emotions have specific frequencies. And they're, they're semi-unique to, to every one. You know, every one of us has a different brain frequency and, and patterns. You know, it's very unique, just like a fingerprint. They can match targets through different ways, but basically they match their frequency and are able to kind of tap into their, their wavelength. So, I mean, if you think about uh, lime glass sitting on a table and, and running through a, a barrage of frequencies and then finally you get to one and, and that glass just shatters. It's, it's a resonant frequency. Right. And they use this type of tech to really target whoever they want. I mean, at this point of 5G satellites being pumped into our orbit, I mean, they can literally hit, you know, 20,000 more targets there or more. You know, I don't know what the spread is. Yeah, the satellite-based 5G, I think, you know, thank you, Elon Musk, is ultimately what they're up to. But I just really want people to um, not, <laughs> let's not be counting on our government to save us here. It's quite, unfortunately, the opposite. And uh, this is about surveillance, and it's about total and complete control. And so when you see what's happening in China... It's more blatant, but here they know we have a different kind of mindset, and so they have to do it right in front of our face while they're pretending to do something else. So this this video is made to just wake people up and um, to to pray against this. I mean, because ultimately this is a spiritual war. Some people don't like to hear that, and I didn't used to believe that myself, but that's really where we're at. If you don't know that you have an enemy to pray against, then you're a lot more vulnerable. Is there anything else you want to share in terms of um, what you witness that you want people to realize? I think you know, tactfully looking at, at how they're coming at us in so many different ways, I feel like they're really trying to divide and conquer. Yes. Uh, and so, you know, if I think if we're really going to be able to pull through this, and you know, I have children myself, you know, if we're going to provide something for our children to thrive in. Yes. You know, I think we all have to fight. We must fight together. We need to ignite, not in a hateful, spiteful way, but, you know, in a realization that this is our duty and responsibility to make this stuff work. And unless we take upon that responsibility, we're going to have to have some government agency to, to do it for us. You know, we, we want to blame, but are we ready to really pick up the building blocks and do it ourselves? You know, this is why I applaud what you're doing. I'm willing to come out here and, and, and do what, I, uh, what I'm doing. It's, you know, I, I believe in the cause. I believe we're going to, to eventually win, but I think we're going to have a, a pretty amazing fight. Totally agree with you. You know, you were in Iraq. You were on the front lines. You saw the kind of deception. That was another thing I thought was amazing. Maybe you could share a little tidbit about that because um, the media is being used to divide us to keep us from looking at the real picture. Tell us a little bit about what you saw from the likes of CNN on the yeah. front lines during the Iraq War. It was my down day. So we, we had two days on, one day off. And so my down day, I was sitting on the couch watching CNN and BBC and, and other news reporting. CNN was reporting stuff happening literally right next to me within uh, a 15 block radius and this just was the stuff that they were reporting was, was not happening and, and I was sitting there knowing that this is not accurate <laughs> news and, and seeing it being reported and then thinking about how many people are actually watching and their whole view is completely changed and then I started I really just started looking at what they were teaching us as far as psychological warfare because that's part of EUD as well, you know? Yes. Being a counter-terrorist, you want to outthink your opponent in lots of different ways. Uh, and so I was thinking about all the people watching it and, and having their complete perceptions being obscured or, or changed. It's very deceiving to be part of a, a military that utilizes that. You know, I think there's a, a point for it on the battlefield, but... If you take more of a macro stance and, and really question, why are we in a war? Right. Why are we in Syria right now? There was a, a famous general that uh, came out 
talking about uh, all the, the countries that we were planning on sacking, you know, Libya, Iraq, and Afghanistan. Yep, it's Syria. happening. He, he, he named them in order. Yep. And That's this, right. So this is crazy that we have this information. I mean, this was pre-planned. They're making the bad guy. Yes. They're playing bad and good. This is what we can show you on television right now because of uh, restrictions from both the uh, Saudis and uh, the U.S. Uh, CD, if you need to take cover, I notice uh, that you've got your gas mask in your hands. If you need to put it on, we, we please have, do so. If you need to take cover, we have, please do so. Uh, right. This is their game. Oh, it's so true, and we have to be willing to turn a blind eye to it or just let the world distract us away from it, and that's what they're counting on. You know, they pretend yeah. as though the military is a different ultimate group of people that are controlling our narrative on the media, and that is just not true. If you think for a second you can't be programmed to be willfully ignorant, and like you need to take some more psych classes and see what our weaknesses are because we're being exploited with our commercials, with our shows, with our movies. It all teaches us mannerisms of how our species interrelates. With it. So if they control that narrative, we become what they want. I hope and my prayer is that content like this uh, wakes enough people up to snap out of it and turn off the news. If I ever watch it, which I don't even have cable, but if I do, it's to learn what other people are being programmed with so I have a better idea of what other people... Yeah. yeah. This has been incredibly insightful, and uh, I just want to thank you for coming on and sharing with us your concern for what is happening to our country. Is there anything else you would like to, to part by saying? I applaud what you're doing, and... Uh... I hope we can change as many perceptions as possible because this is an immediate threat. So welcome and uh, thank you. I really appreciate you coming on. God bless you, brother. Well, what did we learn today? <sighs> this man gave us insider information from the military where this stuff is made an account confirming that the severely damaging biological impacts from 5G, whether it's short-term onset of various cancers and autoimmune diseases that are reported in my last two videos, that they're indeed valid. We know now that some people like him have tried hard to shine a light on this issue from within and were shut down. We even know that millimeter wave frequencies have capacities beyond causing cancer and sterility, but that they will ultimately be able to report what you had for breakfast or if you had toast with your omelets. They'll be able to see what you're carrying in your pockets on the street. They can detect your heart rate and EEG patterns in your brain, which would give it the ability to read your emotions and thoughts. 5G frequencies can potentially transmit frequencies that can manipulate those emotions, whether it's inducing a frequency of anxiety or depression or rage. And we know at 95 gigahertz, that millimeter waves can cause one's skin to feel like it's burning. And other frequencies can stimulate your inner cochlea to hear voices or any other sound they want to put in there, literally inside your head. I mean, we've already done it just to the bad guys. Anyone else want to go live in the woods? <laughs> you know, sometimes I have to laugh to keep from crying, but there is no fear when we are following our Father's voice. Yes? This may go beyond some of your beliefs. I expect that it might, but just give me a minute and hear me out. What's the worst thing that can happen? Some of you may not believe in a hierarchy of evil, but as you watch these kinds of videos, you're starting to figure out that some of these things that are happening are beyond greed. They are beyond quarterly earnings. They are intentional deceptions and manipulations that are coming from a very real, very established place of evil. 
And some of you may have even begun to accept that, well, perhaps these elites do, you know, follow some kind of force. And, and when you learn about Freemasonry, oh, well, maybe they even have rituals that they think gets them more of what they want, but that doesn't make it real. I mean, I certainly understand not wanting to believe in any of this. I spent most of my adult life, in fact, not only not only feeling sorry for, but even laughing at people who believed in the highest form of evil or Satan. But just consider for a moment that if these elites really are answering to and abiding in these dark forces, and it seems obvious that it's to enslave us, it seems evident that there's a very good chance that this is real. So when you listen to this man talking about how the media is so blatantly telling us lies, like he looks out the window in Iraq, he sees one thing, he turns on the TV, it says something totally wrong and different. Lies that are there to shape your perception. What you believe is true. Couldn't? It also be true that the same ones shaping the media and the military agendas also have a hand in our education, in our college and publishing companies, as well as the most effective forms of persuasion, our music and our films. Conclusive proof of the propaganda spun into our minds via film and music is found when you look into the agendas of think tanks like the Frankfurt School and the Tavistock Institute. Agendas from groups like these point to the fact that a handful of people have been responsible for not only selling us wars for over a hundred years, but that they do indeed have a hand in directly shaping our culture, our ideas, even our very belief or disbelief in God. And our acceptance of the surveillance grid is only one part of their plan. A lifelong New World Order strategist named Zbigniew Brzezinski wrote openly about the ultimate plans for the elite to take complete control of the masses. Brzezinski, who, fun fact, secretly funded and even gave personal pep talks to Islamic militants under Carter, which incidentally became the birth of the Taliban, Osama bin Laden, and the likes of ISIS today. U.S. National Security Advisor Brzezinski flew to Pakistan to set about rallying resistance. He wanted to arm the Mujahideen without revealing America's role. On the Afghan border near the Khyber Pass, he urged the soldiers of God to redouble their efforts. We know of their deep belief in God, and we are confident that their struggle will succeed. You know, that land over there is yours. You'll go back to it one day because your fight will prevail and you'll have your homes and your mosques back again because your cause is right and God is on your side. Zbig had his fingers in many pieces of the New World Order pie for several decades serving presidents both right and left. The following statement taken from his book written in 1970 makes it obvious that the 5G linchpin has been planned for a long time, but notice what he mentions would be necessary to make it work. The technotronic era involves the gradual appearance of a more controlled society. Such a society would be dominated by an elite and unrestrained by traditional values. Soon, it will be possible to assert almost continuous surveillance over every citizen and maintain up-to-date complete files containing even the most personal information. Notice that he states the society must be unrestrained by traditional values. This is key. For that was a huge component that had to be accomplished. The goal of removing those pesky traditional values had to be completely eroded before the people would willingly succumb to such a completely controlled society. And as he admitted, this controlled society would come in gradually. So, our traditional values had to be eroded gradually as well. 
For those who don't know, what are traditional values? Well, the once very strong belief in and strength of the family had to go. Because when you lose a strong family, you lose the security and belonging that comes with it. Without a strong foundation of support, you have less chance of mustering strength to resist external forces. This is Warfare 101. Traditional values like compassion had to be replaced with narcissism. Valuing freedom had to be replaced with embracing groupthink or the hive mind. And of course, the values of morality coming from a faith and a righteous God had to be replaced with its opposite or nihilism the do what thou wilt being the whole of the law. So media had to gradually glamorize the latter and mock the former to make belief in God and the spiritual war we all face uncool or even a sick joke. If you think I'm grasping for straws, consider the manipulation tactics by the man called the father of spin or Edward Bernays. Nephew of Sigmund Freud, Bernays' work was instrumental in defining the goals and strategies of the masses via manipulations of individual unconscious desires, as well as using crowd psychology and herd instincts to influence their perceptions. In his book called Propaganda, he said, In almost every act of our daily lives, whether in the sphere of politics or business, in our social conduct or our ethical thinking, We are dominated by the relatively small number of persons who understand the mental processes and social patterns of the masses. It is they who pull the wires which control the public mind. A couple of examples of Bernays fine work spinning include his great increase in profits for the American Tobacco Company. When he took on the challenge of changing the current taboo of women smoking in public. Every year, New York held an Easter Day parade to which thousands came. And Bernays decided to stage an event there. He persuaded a group of rich debutantes to hide cigarettes under their clothes. Then, they should join the parade, and at a given signal from him, they were to light up the cigarettes dramatically. Bernays then informed the press that he had heard that a group of suffragettes were preparing to protest by lighting up what they called torches of freedom. To do so, he arranged a group of women to proudly march in a New York City parade. Sound familiar? Puffing away for all the photographers to see. And so the next day, this was not just in all of the New York papers. It was across the United States and around the world. And from that point forward, uh, the sale of cigarettes to women began to rise. He had made them socially acceptable with a single symbolic act. The New York Times dutifully embraced their role for the stunt, referring to the women not as smoking cancer sticks or even to call them cigarettes, but they called them torches of freedom. It was a smashing success and sent profits for this addictive product through the roof. Bernays also helped the Aluminum Company of America, Alcoa, to avoid destroying its profits by creating the spin to the American public that many of you still may believe today, that water fluoridation was beneficial to human health. Chemists in many cities are helping to bring the benefits of fluoridation to children. Now, our children can have better health through fluoridated water. They can drink away tomorrow's tooth decay. Have more attractive teeth. regardless of the fact that it was actually an industrial waste byproduct of the aluminum and fertilizer industries that up until then had been responsible for poisoning the air, water, and soil to such a degree that it had maimed hundreds of thousands of livestock surrounding the Alcoa plants. Bernay used the ADA and the media to help the company go from paying inordinate amounts of money to dispose of the toxic waste safely to ultimately instead be paid for the waste by cities all over America for its injection into our water supply. Bernays was very honest when he said in his book, the conscious and intelligent manipulation of the organized habits and opinions of the masses is an important element in democratic society. 
those who manipulate this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government, which is the true ruling power of our country. Unfortunately, mere business profits were hardly ever the only motive of Bernays or Tavistock's PR assignments for the world. Lying propaganda such as this has spawned and funded not some, but most wars. It's led the good old United States of America to overthrow multiple democratically elected leaders, as well as justified or underplayed the deaths of tens of millions of people from all over the world. But that's a topic for another video. Here's the big question. What if, and this is for unbelievers, obviously, but what if the very same dark hierarchy that is grasping for our very minds through 5G, what if that same hierarchy is the same one that taught you to question whether God was real in the first place? that taught you by saying it in different ways over and over. One thing to talk to Jesus, it's another thing when Jesus talks to you. Exactly. Okay, well, that's different. Through music, through your heroes, through your celebrities, through exposés that are promoting only the hypocrisy in those who believe, through the PR that is only talking about the ones that are pretending to be of God, rather than truly righteous people who are doing what we were told to do. What if they were doing all that to intentionally teach you that believing in God and Satan is for the uneducated? I mean, if you were the worst kind of evil and you wanted to control the world and lessen your chance of being exposed, isn't that what you would do? Convince the world that you aren't real? It's really brilliant. I mean, it certainly would lessen the number of qualified spiritual warriors that could come against you, now wouldn't it? And most astounding of all is he's convinced you that you came up with that conclusion all on your own. Now that's evil genius. And that's how lesser magic works. Unbelievers often get upset about how, well, if there is a God, you know, how could God let this world get into the shape that it is in? I mean, they won't believe in God unless it is to, to blame him for the state of things. What I never knew prior to reading the Bible, that book that I only used to say was written to control people, <laughs> that in that book, it tells us that the world is fallen. And there's one in there that told us that all of this would happen. And further, he told us that he was not king of this place. Most fail to realize that God gives us free will here. He's never going to force you to come to him. And thankfully, he lets us make mistakes without immediately giving us consequences which also goes for those deceived folks who are lining up yes-men for the dark side. But know this, justice will be done for what happens on this earth, and it won't be pretty for those who are working with wickedness. But instead of focusing on our eternal life, we're taught through media to be completely invested in and caught up on what is going on here, rather than understanding what eternally is coming after our time in this place is done. They don't want you to think about that. They only want you to be invested in now. But our time here is very, very short. This place is only a test, but it's like the most phenomenal virtual reality that you can imagine, and you get one life. And in that life, you get to choose your allegiance before you die. You will choose obedience to darkness, or you will choose obedience to the light. When you choose darkness, you may have some goodies, but you're ultimately lied to and misled. And when you choose light, you're cared for and refined and made new. Another thing I didn't know before I read the Bible is that the highest echelon of evil had another name. He is called the Prince of of the air. 
5G. Makes sense, right? So just as that Department of Homeland Director needed yes men to fulfill his mission, he himself was a yes man. He had someone dark in his ear. And just as he needed obedience to fulfill his part of that agenda for the Prince of the Air, our Father needs yes men and women who hear his voice and who joyfully abide in what he says. Here's the great news. <laughs> when you hear that voice and when you follow it, evil here has no power over you. So are you being called to be a yes man? For your creator? My guess is if you made it to the end of this video that you are. So I guess what I'm doing is if you don't already know it, I invite you to get to know the voice of your creator. This is a relationship. The voice of your father, Yahweh, Abba, of Jesus, Yeshua, and his Holy Spirit. I want to encourage you to seek him. But just so you know, it doesn't require me. It doesn't require a denomination. It doesn't even require a church with four walls or even a book to start. That will come in very handy later, though. You just need to call out humbly and sincerely from your heart. My first time calling out to him only a few years ago, I wasn't sure what I believed. So, I sincerely ask to be shown the truth in a way that I could understand it. And because he's God, he can do that. A couple scriptures about calling out, just so you know. In Psalm 50, 15, Call upon me in the day of trouble. I shall rescue you, and you will honor me. Psalm 86, 5. For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in loving kindness to all who call upon you. Finally, Jeremiah, one of my favorite prophets, said, Call to me, and I'll answer you, and I'll tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. So I'll let it go from there, but uh, call out to him. He will answer you in a way that will astound you, and more importantly, in a way that no one can ever take from you. I love you guys. Nothing left.